All right, so this is a video about getting the QSAC Music Tap Whirl plugin to work in Ableton Live. I've got a session pulled up here, um, default session with a couple audio tracks. First thing we're going to do is make sure, if you've never done this before, uh, this we're going to add the plugin and then we're going to check it out. So, options, preferences. Here you're going to want to click on the plugins and then turn on your VST3 plugin system folders. Uh, by default, um, it's looking for the common files folder. I'll show you what I mean. So this folder, I'm on Windows, um, C, Program Files, Common Files, and VST3. That's where it's looking for when it says System Folders. You can have a custom folder and turn that on. If you want to keep like your third-party plugin somewhere separate, you could do that. Common files. You could put them there, create like a third-party, VST3s, whatever you want to do. Um, not needed. It. I've got mine in my VST3 common files folder. Okay, it auto-recognizes that. It rescans. Plugins. VST3. And there's my other brand of plugins. And here we have QSEC Music. Tap a whirl. I'm going to bring that over. And now I've got the tap whirl on my track. I have my guitar plugged in direct. And I'm just going to give that a shot. Set this depth to 100%. We're going to go to waveform 9. It's kind of like a backwards fade in thing. Speed up a little bit. Cool. So that's how you get the Tap a World plugin to work on Ableton Live. You will need a decent computer and interface in order to actually use it live. I'm using it right now. And I've got a bit of latency going on. So uh, depending on your settings, again, I had that, let's see, audio. I've got a 15 millisecond input latency and a 34 millisecond output latency. And so for an overall latency of 49 milliseconds, which is very significant when you're trying to play live. Uh, if you're really good, you can maybe hear through that, but... It's difficult for me. So, take into account uh, the interface that you're using and the computer you're using, your sample rate, etc., on how that is going to impact your uh, overall latency and your ability to use this live. But you could totally use it um, on MIDI tracks. You could use it on recorders. If this is how you mix, you can use it uh, for post production, absolutely or if you have perhaps a fast enough system. All right. Have fun. Hope this helps. Okay. QSACmusic.com. Subscribe to us. We're going to be dropping some more stuff coming out soon. And uh, tips and tricks on things you can do with our hardware pedals and plugins. Okay. Thanks. Bye.